let there be light. Light's fantastic, isn't it? Now, where would we be without light? Hello, YouTube friends, and welcome to this edition of Lightroom Bite Size. Now, in this episode, we're gonna take a look at how you can add light or take light away by simply using the radial filter. So stay tuned, because I do love a bit of light. I do, do. well, probably not that bright. Another fabulous shot of Sophie. Now she called to my studio one day last week and I captured this shot. And um, I shot it against a neutral gray background. I'm happy with the shot, but I think if the background was darker, it would add a little bit more drama. So my preferred method of doing that would be to use the radial tool. So I'm gonna introduce you to the radial tool in this tutorial video, show you how simple it is to use and show you some of the great effects you can do with it. The radial tool lives on this tool strip just here above the basic set of tools. And here it is here, just on the right hand side, the radial filter. Now when I click on it, this window will open up and you can see that we have a set of sliders and those sliders are virtually identical to what you can find in the basic tool panel. And the difference is that we can use those sliders to make local corrections, whereas Obviously in the basic panel, it does a, an overall adjustment. So this is great for sort of being able to target certain areas within your image to make them lighter, darker, desaturate them or whatever you want to do. Now it's really easy to use. So simply moving into the image, if I hold my mouse key down while I drag, I can draw a shape. Once the shape's on the screen, I can adjust it with the points in you know, as you can see around the outside. Now, if I move the mouse to an area between the points, you can see that a curved arrow appears and that allows me to change the angle. So I can move it, I can resize it and I can rotate it. If I move the mouse to where the little black pin is and just leave it there for a moment, I can see the area in red is the part of the image that will be affected by the edits. So the anywhere outside that oval shape, if I make an adjustment, that's what it's gonna adjust, all the red areas. And obviously inside the oval, nothing will be adjusted. Now, if I come across to the panel and simply go down to the bottom and click on invert, so if I check that box and then go back to the image and mouse over, you will see that it's only the area inside the oval. And outside of that, nothing's gonna be affected. Okay, so you can always sort of see where your adjustments are gonna be made just by doing that and checking that box. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I've got the inside selected. So I'm gonna hover over there, I can see the red area and then come across to the sliders and I'm gonna take the exposure all the way down. And you can see now that I've just affected the exposure inside the shape. And if I invert it, it will be the opposite. Now with the feather, if I take that to zero, I would produce a hard edge around the side of the shape and obviously going the other way, I would produce a much softer uh, edge to that shape. Let's put it back to 50. So when you want to delete the shape, um, just simply make sure the pin is black, which means that the shape is active and just simply hit backspace and it disappears. So back to this image then and darkening the outside. So I'm gonna draw a shape sort of like this just bear with me while i draw this shape something like that maybe bring it down so i'm going to draw a shape kind of like that and um, then i'm going to take i'm going to make sure first of all that the background is selected which it is because you can see where the red area is and then nip up to the exposure and i'm going to drop that to about minus two and you can see the background is going nice and dark. And that looks great, doesn't it? So I'm happy with that, except for the fact that the shirt that Sophie's wearing, this shirt, is actually gone darker and part of her body has gone darker as well. And we know that by mousing over and seeing where the red areas are. And we can see that there's obviously a red area on her shirt. So we need to erase that. So going back to the tool panel then, 
we have an option to select a brush. So I'm going to click on brush and then drop down to the bottom and we've got two brush sizes and we've also got the ability to erase. So I'm going to select the erase brush. Now we can change the size of it, the feather and the flow. So I'm going to keep the flow roughly on 50 and um, the feather on about 50. Now all I simply need to do is to move into the image and just brush over the areas where I want the adjustment removed and they will include the shirt and um, Sophie's skin as well. So I'll speed this section up because I'm sure you don't want to watch me doing this. So that looks great. Now if I switch on the before and after, this is what it looked like before the edit, which, you know, it still looks great and it's, it's all subjective, isn't it? But for me, I, I thought a darker background would just add a little bit more drama to the shot. And that's what it looks like by just using the radial filter. Very easy, isn't it? Now this particular image was an easy one to do. Let's have a look at one that's a little bit more complicated. Still easy, but you know, one way you have to put a bit more thought into it. This one was a bit obvious, wasn't it? So let's have a look at this shot then, which I took in Madrid earlier this year. So I remember capturing this shot and um, what struck me was the guy in the barber shop is getting his hair cut severely short and a lady walked past and as you can see she's got loads and loads of curly hair and I thought the juxtaposition of the two would make a really good shot. Now obviously the camera is exposed for the inside of the barber shop and the outside is quite dark. Now it was early evening so it should be dark but it's perhaps a bit too dark. So what I did was, I'm not going to show you all this, but what I did was I went to the basic set of tools and I corrected that. But just for fun, I'm just going to show you that's what the image looks like. So I think that's a really fun shot where this guy is losing all his hair on the floor and this lady has got loads of hair. So let's jump to this image where I've made the corrections. So that after the basic corrections is what it looked like. And am I happy with that? Well, not really because it's too light on the outside. I want it darker on the outside. And I also want this lady to be slightly lighter. So let's have a look at that then. And uh, again, just using the radial tool. So I'm gonna draw a shape and I'm gonna start from around about here. Now remember, I wanna darken the outside of this image. So roughly round about there, a bit wider maybe. Um, mousing over the pin in the center will show me that, yeah, I'm darkening on the outside. And then I just want to drop the exposure to probably about minus one, roughly round about there, and that's dark on the outside. Now I also want to take away some of the saturation, so I'm going to drop that to say around about, let's say, around about minus 40. Now I've now introduced darkness into the background, or around the outside, I should say, so you can see it's looking a bit more like nighttime. Now, one of the things about doing that is it's darkened the actual lady as she's walking past. And um, so I need to sort of lighten that area up. So let's take a look at that. Now I'm gonna press H on the keyboard, which will just hide that adjustment. Okay, it's still there, don't worry, but it's just hid, hidden for the time being. While we take a look at the lady, now I can see that she has a highlight on the top of her jacket and there's some highlights in her face as well. So perhaps there was a street light in the top left hand corner shining down onto her face. Now I can't say for certain <laughs> whether that was the case. However, it does look that way, doesn't it? So I'm gonna add a shaft of light coming down which will illuminate her face and really make that area pop out. So we'll have the darkness from the first radial filter adjustment we made and then we'll have this shaft of light coming down and landing onto a face. So first of all I'm going to press on the letter H just so we can see where the adjustments are going to be made and I'm going to go across to the panel and I'm going to click on new and that will reset everything ready for a new radial filter adjustment and then I'm going to draw a shape over here. I'm going to start from around about there and this is going to take a fair bit of manipulating to get the shape right. So I need to rotate it 
Let's make it a little bit bigger. Maybe somewhere around about there. So once I'm happy with the shape, first thing you need to do is to make sure that you're affecting the right area. So if I mouse over the pin in the center, you can see that I'm affecting the area inside. And uh, now I just want to lift the exposure because I want to brighten that area. So I'm going to take up to about plus one. And that looks great, doesn't it? Um, and I can manipulate that if I think it needs a bit more. It may need to be dragged that way a little bit, I think. Uh, Okay, and I have a press H, we can hide that, and we can see that it's now got this shaft of light that's coming down, and of course the outside has been darkened by the first adjustment we made, and that is kind of looking cinematic to me, and um, you know it's it's telling a story, isn't it? And that's what photography should do, and it's kind of ironic that you know the guy's getting all his hair removed, and she has got this massive afro haircut, and I think that looks great. And that last adjustment we made, it really did sort of show or, you know, emulate what, what could actually have been the case that there was a street light there with this shaft of light coming down. So if we did a before and after, this is what it looked like beforehand. Uh, and this is what it looks like now. And it looks great, doesn't it? Now, when you think that it started off looking like this and the fact that you can take a shot that looks like that and turn it into something like that. And that is the sheer power of Lightroom and also the power of your creativity because you can see in this particular shot, I did put some thought into it and I'm sure you can do the same. And it's all achievable using that radial tool. Now, of course, I did the basic adjustments first, but the radial tool really helped me to bring that photograph to life. So there you have it then, an introduction to the radial tool. It's great, isn't it? Now experiment with it, have fun. There's loads you can do with it. So if you enjoyed this video, put a little thumbs up and consider subscribing if you already haven't done so. But most of all, above all else, thanks for joining me. I've really enjoyed your company. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next upload. Bye for now. Take a photograph and make the moment last step.